What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, thank you very much. My name is Blaine Roberts, owner and operator of Panhandle Salt Beach Fishing. We're running beach fishing guides, Perdido Key, Pensacola, Orange Beach, and Gulf Shores, Alabama. We also offer tailored surf fishing lessons. So if you want to enhance skills or just get to know the game all together, we got a package for you. We also work with a handful of companies that offer you guys discounts. You can find everything that we're involved with in the description of this video. I'm in Pensacola Beach this morning, about an hour east of my hometown. Meeting up with my buddy, Tony Faggioni, owner and operator of Fish Gum. Me and Tony have been trying to get together for months. <laughs> <laughs> just busy busy lifestyles like it never works out but this morning we were texting and we figured out we both had an afternoon free so we jumped on it i just pulled up to the spot i am about 30 minutes early it's looking fairly flat out there and dirty dirty for pensacola usually when i come to pensacola it's because i'm chasing cleaner water where i'm at in perdido we have four major passes like all right there next to each other so we have a lot of bay water dumping into the gulf that tends to keep things pretty dirty you get over closer to Pensacola, Navarre, Panama City, it starts cleaning up. So especially during the Pompano runs in fall and spring, I am in Pensacola a lot, again, because of the clearer conditions. The Pompano are sight feeders, meaning they want to see that bait. So the clearer, the better, guys. But again, I am 30 minutes early, so I'm going to kick back and take a nap. I'm 45 years old, y'all. Like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, that's my nap time. <sighs> Tony will wake me up when he gets here. Oh, we got the big boys today. And there's the other one little bit smaller not too much so that's an 8,000 and a 6,500 not for sharks or anything like that I'm not too interested in fishing for those guys I just need the extra line capacity for the drone sometimes these guys are running deep and I do have the swell pro fisherman max so I have that advantage now to fly some bait out deep but it's not working with my little 4,000s. So I had to beef up some real size. Again, not for necessarily bigger fish, just deeper drops. Let's see if we can get us some fleas. This time of the year, they're hard. It's so cold that you can't really see them, but you can blind rake for them and get lucky. There we go. I see something moving in there. Got a lot of coquina clams, which these fish are feeding on also. So that tells me that the spot that I'm held up in here, right here, there is bait here. Nothing on that one. There we go. I was able to work the tide. And when it pulled back, I hit the lip real quick. I didn't get a deep dig. But I was able to get enough of my rake in there to grab some out of that lip. Last thing I want to do right now is get my feet wet. <laughs> it's cold, man. What I'm going to do is wait for it to push back. Watch that other wave there. Uh, that was too quick. There we go. Grab that lip, oh yeah, and then get out of the way. There we go. All right, we're picking them off two, three at a time. That was a good scoop. I got about a half a dozen on that one. They're all around the same size too. These are good little size sand fleas, guys. Not too big, not too small. There seems to be a lot of them right here. So that tells me that this is probably the bait that's going to be the most active today. Go ahead and get a few on while I'm waiting on Tony. I'm trying to pick off some whiting 
for cut bait. This dirty, choppy water. I would say there's some reds around, guys. So more than likely, that's gonna be the target. We can get some whiting. Get some nice little Gulf Kingfish fillets out there. We'll be in business. Because these sand fleas are so close, I'm picking them right at this first lip. I'm gonna put my bait right there. Super close to shore, guys. And hopefully those whiting are swimming in and feeding on that lip. And give them an easy meal. Getting all those sand fleas has got me excited. It's hard to get them in the winter, y'all. Using a lot of synthetics during these colder months. Frozen sand fleas, uh, frozen shrimp. My local bait and tackles, they've even had problems getting shrimp, fiddler crabs, things like this right now. So to find all those fleas is very promising. Okay. Can't take pictures. <laughs> Can't take pictures of your camera. All right, okay? guys, sorry. <sighs> Tony's got something marvelous, y'all. He asked me not to put it on camera. I just sampled it. And this word, or this phrase, gets used a lot, and I, I tend to try to stay away from it but it is a game changer. It is a game changer for beach fishing. Uh, he's working on the patent and all that, obviously. So he doesn't really want to put it out there to the public quite yet. But guys, this thing is sweet. Tony's an inventor. Tony's a tinkerer. That's the best way to describe Tony. He tinkers and tinkers and he comes up with things. Some things never make light. And then things like this are worth putting the extra effort into and actually getting it manufactured, getting the patent and all that. It's amazing, guys. And it ain't bait. Woo, bunch of ghost shrimp holes. I don't got the pump with me. Trying out a new float today. This is from my buddies over at Wild Wonderful Outdoors, my buddy Charles. They were a sponsor of ours for the spring tournament last year. Him and his family came down. They had a completely different style product that they were doing, and I haven't heard from him in a year. A package showed up three days ago, randomly, to the mailbox, and it had some of these rigs in it. So he spent the last year really using the tournament for what it's for, right? So networking, getting opinions of other guys, other rig makers, things like that. And he took it to heart. And he's been working hard this last year to design these float hooks. Those floats are permanently fixed to those floats. And those floats have a great shape to them. Something I've never seen before. So we're gonna give them a whirl. See if we can get something on them. I just got straight fleas on this one. Next line out, we got a, one of the bigger fleas, piece of fish gum. This is just a single drop. That is a frisky fin rattle float on there also. So it's gonna make a little noise as it's getting bounced around in this surf. And I'm not gonna throw this one as deep. We're just fanning out cast guys, covering different zones, trying to figure out where these guys are swimming. This is my three foot sand spike. So I followed my tracks, following my tracks back. And there it is. Bounce that along the way. Ugh. I need that. So getting the whiting rod back out, I'm gonna use little chunks of this FC Fishco. I'm in the testing process with this bait. The concept is absolutely excellent. It doesn't need any kind of refrigeration, anything like that. They're using real shrimp, but it's new. You know what I mean? So there hasn't been a long time of people fishing with it and it proven true and all that. So I'm giving it a shot. I'm gonna run it through season and see how it does. I want it to work, man. I really do. It's a very easy, fast bait to use. Again, it doesn't take much to store it. Comes in a nice little convenient container. Like all that stuff is great. We just gotta see if it catches anything. Tony said it looked like a drum hit. 
So I'm gonna drop my bait size. I know that kind of seems counterproductive, but in the winter time, I have caught more big black drum on little tiny pieces of bait than I have big pieces of cut bait. And it is time for black drum. I know they were catching them west of us last weekend. So they could be heading this way. Finally, 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 my little whiting rod. Come on, come on. What do we got here? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a fish on the light action. We got Blaine with the first fish of the day. This was up close, this was stray shrimp. Up close? Yep. We need to put some more rods up close then. This, this is a good fish. Yeah, it is. My guess is gonna be a redfish. Hopefully it's a slot. Come on, baby. Or maybe it's the record whiting. Uh, this is on the tough bite rig, the all clear one. Oh, really? Yep. Ah, naked. Yep. There we go, baby. Come on. I'm calling, I'm calling red, dude. I'm thinking it might be a red, Tony. I mean, I, I think the way this thing's fighting like that. Yep, it might be a red. Come on, baby. That's awesome. Well, I'm, I'm throwing all my stuff at Cuba, so I'm gonna have to bring mine in a little bit. <sighs> Looks like a black drum. Uh, nope, red, red, red. Come on, he's right here. Good fish. He's Where right here. Slot. He's right here. I need some meat. Come on, this is where you lose them. There we go, guys. Beautiful black drum. That guy was a fighter and on light action. Got him on that panhandle salt tough bite rig. That's a rig I use when the water's really clear and I feel like the fish are being picky. I'll tie on that tough bite rig. Water's dirty today. This guy still hit it. We're gonna get a measure on him. If he's slot, I'm taking him home. I'm gonna eat him. I'm gonna put my rods up close. All right, this guy is 22 and a quarter. Going home. We will take this home, guys. We'll do a catch, clean, and cook. Black drum is delicious when they're in the slot size. These guys are absolutely delicious. My battery died on my chest cam. I'm just figuring that out. I'm not sure when it died. I hope I got the fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh man get these batteries changed out i'm gonna go ahead and bleed this guy out also go ahead and prep him get him home and eat him a little sword five inch bait knife go ahead and bleed this guy out i always keep a double bucket with me i use one for tackle i've become a big fan of the tackle bucket i keep one for bleeding fish get this guy in there already got him cut should bleed right out all right there we go get in there big boy drown that bucket go check some baits we didn't get one more hit after that that was the only hit in three hours y'all we were in a great spot. We moved around a little bit, changed baits. Really dirty water today though, guys. I think that was our issue. Hey, got cold too. Whoo. <clears throat> Tony's a good guy. You guys go check him out if you are not familiar with Tony Fagioni fish gum. He's been at this a long time, guys. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, he's a tinkerer. He's always got his mind on new products, new things to really enhance the game of surf fishing. He showed me something today, guys, that I'm laughing because it's so genius. It's gonna touch like a certain group of surf fishermen in an extraordinary positive way. Obviously, I've been asked not to talk about it or to <laughs> or to video it or anything. Again, he's working on the patent. Keep an eye on Tony's page, Fish Gum. Uh, again, he is constantly coming up with new stuff, new products, baits, tackle, gear. I got a runt rod right here he gave me, a little four foot six. Tony showed us what was possible with a four foot six rod. When you think surf fishing, you think 13 foot rods. That's all I could use. 13 footers. Tony's out there fishing with a four foot six and everybody was laughing at him. Now everybody wants a four foot six. 
<laughs> including me. All right, guys, back at the house. It got cold on us. I'm gonna get everything off the back of the truck, guys. Get everything washed down, tightened up. Then we'll clean up this drum. <laughs> you like that? Whoa, whoa, you had a big one? <laughs> Ow. Find the swords. We're gonna need the serrated and the seven inch for this. Put a little 1000 series Shimano on this runt rod. It's got 10 pound braid there. This is a cool little rod, guys. This is not marketed as like a kid's rod. This is a big boy rod, y'all. But it does work great for Thunder. It's easier for him to handle, like even him practicing casting and things like that. Monty, my wife, took one look at it and tried to claim it as her own. We can let her use it too. Really nice, put together, thought out rod, y'all. Get these guys up here. I keep everything on the ceiling, y'all. <laughs> Just gives me more room in the garage. I'm not taking up an entire wall or anything like that. Keeps them out of harm's way of little people. Got a lot of money invested up there. <laughs> yeah. Try to protect it as much as possible. I've been thinking about getting the racks that actually go on your garage door that lift up and down because I'm tall enough to where I can reach up here and get them on and off and they're fairly cheap. You guys leave me a comment. If any of y'all out there watching this video have the racks that go on the garage door, let me know. Let me know how they work. Let me know what you think about them. We never got the Swell Pro out today because we never got any bait. <laughs> <laughs> Need bait to drop bait. And we're gonna break out the Bird of Prey tailgate cutting board. If you guys have not seen this yet, you are in for a surprise. I'll be using this during season, like when the, the guides pick up, probably starting in March, April definitely through the summer my buddy brian arnold owner and operator of bird of prey fishing tackle made this for me and this guy is designed to fit right on the tailgate my buddy over in louisiana jared uh, his channel is outside the levees. He would love this thing. He's doing all kind of hunting and fishing. Uh, he is a just outdoors enthusiast. Jared, if you're watching, hit me up, man. I can set you up with Bird of Prey to try to get one of these. We're gonna go ahead and spray her down. Get all that garage dust off of it. Let's get our drum. stinky in there on the ride home that's going to be a good eating size guys i'll link uh, both tony and jared's channels in the description of this video if you guys want to go check them out a couple nice guys we all help each other out when we can this guy's got a measuring board right on it go ahead and measure her again total length on black drum right there at 23 inches be going with the sword serrated first nine inch knife nice serrated edge on this guy sword makes an excellent product y'all i'm gonna try to scale them a little bit first just to make these cuts a little bit easier got a tough tough armor on them <laughs> 
get that first cut. And there's that big old bone. I'm just gonna work this knife like this, kind of prying this first cut. Make sure you get them scales off. Then we wanna slip it through, and pull on down. And what I like to do is to go ahead and get the other side cut. The serrated helps with that bone right there. Stick it through again. <clears throat> out the tail. Get our seven inch out. And we'll clean her up. Just a big old rib cage in here guys we'll end up getting the nine inch serrated back out in a minute but i just kind of want to get things started here start separating some of this meat getting into the white meat i'm telling you there's a lot of people that turn their nose up at this fish because Probably they've had experience with the big ones. They catch those big 30 pounders and it's just not good meat. But with these small ones, this is up there with sheep's head for me. Oh, got a scale right in the eye. See now we got in there. I need this nine incher again for that rib cage. I'm just kind of twisting the knife so it'll pop it. One more cut in there. I should do it. Yeah. All this here we're gonna cut off anyway right it's our first slab and all these bones right here I'll take my serrated kind of angle it Get that off. Still saving some meat right there. That's what the angle will do. I'm looking for worms and I see none, guys. I'm telling you, that's a good piece of meat. Skin this guy. Let 
There's his armor. You got that guy clean as can be. You see on this side, it's just nice and white. There's a tough piece right there. It's not bone, probably cartilage. But I want to get rid of this vein. But I want to save some of it. Meaning the red part of the meat. So I'm just going to cut that main part out. And save that little guy. some bones right there get those out there's that tough piece get that off there we go guys that's a nice fillet right there right from the Gulf of Mexico Got some fleas <laughs> that crawled out. Had them all in my shrimp container. These guys must have crawled out. We do not want these in the garage, guys. We'll come out here in the morning and it'll be whew, smelling like a morgue. Give those to the critters. Which one I can use? Um, the one in the back. There's a big one on the back right. Oh, the big one in the back? Yeah, back right. We are getting ready to cook up that black drum, guys. Cuántas arepas? Tres? How many do I want? Mm -hmm. Two. We're gonna have a nice little salad, some Colombian arepas, and our black drum. I'm not gonna do a lot to it. I really wanna taste it. I mean, it's not gonna be any surprise. I've eaten black drum before. It's a great tasting fish. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse them off one more time. Give them a little pat with a paper towel to kind of dry them. I'm going to use this fishmongrel seasoning. I use this quite often. It's just a mixture of a bunch of different spices. It's not very overwhelming. It's not like a blackening season or anything like that. Kind of pat it down in there. I already got my pan hot. Got a healthy scoop of butter in there. Coming down. Some olive oil. garlic right to the mix just some minced garlic like that watch yourself baby that's getting ready fish is seasoned up And 
and that won't take long guys I'd say three four minutes on each side Monty's cooking up the Colombian arepas if you haven't had these you're missing out I'm gonna go ahead and flip them Our rapists are almost ready, guys, and we will be eating. All right, guys. I was going to show you a nice plate, but my oldest is already taking a hunk off. <laughs> so this is considered a trash fish. Like, not a lot of anglers eat black drum. They said it's not good. I want you to try it and tell me what you think. Nah. Tommy? Um... Like between the black drum, the pompano that we usually eat, the whiting. Uh, this is the worst one. That's the worst one? Ah. <laughs> oh. We're gonna have Thunder try it. What do you think, Thunder? Um, a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. <laughs> really? You wanna eat all mine? Come on, come on, baby, baby. <laughs> so we got one family member saying it's the worst fish that I've ever cooked. And then we have Thunder gave me a 10 out of 10. No, 7 out of 10. He changed it. 7 out of 10. Let's see what Mati says. Have you tried it yet? I'm going to. Try it, try it, try it. Not bad. Mm -mm. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. The reason the black drum gets a bad name, guys, is because of the big ones. This time of year in the winter in the surf, we catch these huge 30, sometimes 40 pound black drum out there. So I'm sure over time, anglers have taken those home and tried to eat them and they're just filled with worms. The meat is super Ew, tough. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But you find those rare slot ones in the surf, and it is rare. Usually they're right undersized or just huge. I mean, it's a great looking meat. I mean, you can see it. Nice, white, flaky. I love it. I just ate one. I give the black drum an eight out of 10, y'all. So the Colombian arepa is basically cornmeal filled with mozzarella cheese, some salt, and then you just grill it. So if we were cooking outside, we could throw these right on the grill. We just throw them in the pan. And we eat these with every meal, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, it doesn't matter, a snack. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'll put like ground beef and cheese and beans on top of this and eat it like that. It's the Colombian tortilla. I'm bumping my black drum up to a nine out of 10. It's delicious. You guys, make sure you go check out sword fishing products, the filet knives I was using. Bird of Prey, which created that huge tailgate cutting board for me, and Fish Gum. Companies like this make these videos possible, guys. I'll link their websites in the description of this video. If you want to see some more Catch, Clean, and Cooks, leave me a comment. I like doing these. We got spring coming up, so there'll be a lot more on the table. I'll see you guys on the next one.